You're listening to Tim Bolkley's Five Minute Bible. Humor in the Bible. Book Two. Exodus. And again, let's start right at near the beginning. And chapter one. After the introduction and the genealogy, verse eight, the sombre note sounds. Now, a new king rose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let's deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase and, in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pitom Ramesses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. Of course, that's what always happens when one group of humans subjugates another. In that very act, they come to fear them, the people they've subjugated. And very often this expresses itself in the belief that the subjugated race are somehow more lively, more full of life stronger, sexier, than the masters. The result here, of course, is that, verse 13, the Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites, and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks they imposed on them. So, once again, a really serious story a really serious story about a horrible oppression and it gets worse verse 15 the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives one of whom was named Shifra and the other Pua when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and you see them on the birth stool if it's a boy kill him if it's a girl she shall live can you imagine a much more terrible command not just to commit murder on innocent babies but that the people who should do so are the very people who are tasked with ensuring safe birth ensuring the first moments of life of these newborn infants we can hardly expect humor here can we verse 17 but the midwives feared God they did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them but they let the boys live that's brave, but it's hardly funny. So, verse 18, the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? Verse 19, the midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are lively and give birth before the midwife comes to them. You see, the midwives beautifully turn Pharaoh's own prejudices against him. The subjugated race are inevitably more lively, more full of life, stronger and sexier. And being more full of life, the women give birth even before the midwives can arrive. Oh, it's brilliant. And it's hilarious because it offers a little glimpse of hope in this otherwise drear and terrible situation. And that's often what humour is. A little glimpse of hope in an otherwise drear or terrible situation and that's why the oppressed often laugh more it's not because they don't feel their oppression it's because they feel it so as you read Exodus chapter 1 at least smile with those poor midwives in their terrible plight and maybe read on into chapter 2 now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she took up a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch, and put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. You have to understand that meanwhile, at the end of chapter 1, Pharaoh, in verse 22, has commanded all his people every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile but you shall let every girl live so if the midwives won't do it then the Egyptians must verse 5 of chapter 2 
the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent a maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. You see, it's in Pharaoh's very own household that his horrible plan is thwarted. It's not just the midwives. It's anyone with a shred of human decency. That, too, is funny. At least it is, if you look at it from the underside, from the viewpoint of the oppressed. It may not be so funny if you read the story from the viewpoint of the oppressor. But who'd want to do that? <laughs>